Halloween edition. So there may be a few gremlins in our network. So if you see any technical issues appearing, please do wave, raise a hand. You know what I mean? We won't want to see any technical issues. <laughs> very good. Very good. <laughs> at, this, at this spooky time of year, hey, where the, the ghosts come out, it's Halloween. So welcome to the ABC Business Network on this Halloween time. No matter what the time, there you go. It's getting spooky again. No matter what the time of year, we got to help each other. We got to support each other. We got to look out for each other. <laughs> so uh, this is the ABC Business Network. It's run by the Armagh, Banbridge, Craig Avon Business District people, but it's open to everyone. Welcome to everyone from wherever. And we've had some people from England, some people from Scotland in the last couple of months. We publish this on YouTube. So keep smiling all the way through. You never know when somebody's going to click in on that five minutes or 10 minutes spot. spot. So keep smiling. Eh? Don't be checking those emails because people will notice on the, on the, uh, <laughs> on the replays. Um, so as you, well, we'll kick off. We'll, as we go through our round the screen, or round the room, as it used to be, round the screen, uh, Wando, um, elevator pitches. Uh, if you can put your details just after you've done your talk so that um, everybody can see your details. I'll put those details in the description section of the YouTube <coughs> video so people can scroll down, click on the link, see your elevator pitch and see your contact details as well. So that's a little extra service we do, whether you're a member or not, as part of the part of the broadcast off onto YouTube. It's not live. I'm going to edit it and put it up later, but it'll be up there in a bit. Today's speaker is the wonderful John McKenna. He'll be telling us how to make sales simple. So really looking forward to that, getting some tips. Uh, as, as we were talking earlier, it's, it's, you know, sales is a wide thing. So some people are in the service industry, some people are in the product industry. So it, um, hopefully we'll all get some little nugget out of it. Really looking forward to hearing John speak. Uh, after that, we'll go out into some breakout rooms of twos or threes, depending on what the number sizes are by the end of the meeting. I know some people have said they have to head early. Was it, it was yourself, Stephen, wasn't it? Yep. So well, I'll make sure you get yourself in there early and Alan has nip off shortly. What else have we got? We don't have David McEwen here today. Um, I'll, I'll give him I'll give him a little plug. Uh, David's uh, Fire Safety and I. Uh, and the reason I'm mentioning him is he, he is our Mr. October. <laughs> no, we don't have a calendar. We don't have an ABC calendar, but we do have a spotlight on YouTube with an extended interview with members. Uh, and, uh, you too could be one of those spotlighted members if you join us as a member. Uh, I don't mean you two as in the band. Now we do have Barbara as a good singer and a good pianist. Um, I'm sure she has other musical instruments. Staffed by the Golden's good. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, and, and Barbara was our our Ms. August, <laughs> or was it was Ms. September? I think. But anyway. We, we, we've, we've got uh, the interviews up there on YouTube as well. So that's another benefit. Other benefits of joining the group. Uh, we, we have a WhatsApp group so we can share interesting uh, other events, share things that are going on, share funny pictures as well from time to time. And um, yeah, you get a shout out. You get a shout out. If you give us an apology in the WhatsApp group, you'll get a shout out. So I'll give that shout out to a few people shortly. And uh, if you do need a Zoom license for, for, for a few minutes, for an extended group meeting, then uh, you can borrow our uh, members license uh, to use that for your own, you know, on a first come first serve basis. And like I say, you've got, you've got the website as well. You get your names shouted out on the website uh, with links back to your website. So that's another good benefit as well of being a member. Um, and our treasure, Alan, when I come to Alan shortly, he'll give us the details on the extra special early bird deals that we have for signing up for uh, next year. Uh, what else? What else have we got? That's about it. Apologies. We've got Mark Fagan has sent in his apologies. He's a wonderful estate agent in the in the area and uh, 
If you need any information on a state agency, then contact Mark Fagan. Paul Vaughan is from Spera, a brand specialist. So if you want any uh, design ideas, <coughs> print ideas, then check out Paul. And Ross and Jonathan Bloomfield, Johnny Bloomfield from Sport to Perform. Uh, he can't make it this morning as well either. So that's all I think. Anybody else have any other apologies that I've missed? I think I've got everyone. Uh, there's a lot more members than that, but again, if you don't give your apologies in, then, then I, I, I can give you a shout out. So give us, get your apologies in if you can't make it and you remember. So uh, without further ado, I think, that's, I think that's enough of me chattering on. We will spotlight Alan to tell us about his business, first of all. <laughs> We've got Alan up. You're on the spotlight. Alan, tell us about your business and then give us that early bird deal info. Well, <clears throat> will do indeed. Um, thanks, folks. Uh, Hygiene Zone is our business, primarily pest control. And at this time of year, there's lots of activity with mice trying to get into the house. So keep your doors closed if you can. And it only takes the size of a barrel pen to let a mouse in through a little hole. So uh, that's, that can be an issue around waste pipes and any little gaps. So what can be very useful to stop that is even a Brillo pad wrapped around uh, a waste pipe. If there's a gap there, you can stuff that in and seal it up with mastic or something like that. That'll help stop them. The other bit of advice I would say at this time of year is you don't need to be feeding the birds just yet. You're also feeding Mr. Ratty. If you if the bird feeder gets scattered everywhere and on the ground, and that can be a major uh, cause of problems. So <clears throat> at the minute, I have to apologize that I need to get away in that lovely weather. We are trying to get a bird exclusion netting project finished and it's dragged on and on. Um, so it's, uh, um, we're trying to get it finished by tomorrow. We're on the last leg, but I'm looking out at the window and I really do not want to go and meet the guys on an access platform in the wind and rain. But as Billy Connolly said, there's no such thing as bad weather, just the wrong clothes. So a few layers and, uh, and that. Um, so that's sort of I'll take the hygiene zone hat off and put the treasurer hat on. Um, just to say what last year or the current year, 2020, last year, um, uh, in 2020, our membership would was £95 for the full year. And what we've always done, um, it runs from January to December. We try and do that, uh, which makes life easier in terms of keeping tabs on things. So it was £95 for the full year, but we've always had what, as Turan said, an early bird option. So that if people pay the fees, uh, our membership for next year, uh, by the 31st of December, 2020, the, pr the, the price is reduced. So last year it was 95 Bearing in mind that we're not meeting in person and we're not unfortunately having the breakfast baps and coffee or whatever else the, that we would have done when we're meeting. Hopefully we will be able to get back to meeting in person at some stage next year. But I think Zoom has been, or we all think Zoom has been quite successful. So uh, I think the aim would be to get a mix of Zoom and perhaps physically meeting uh, as we did before and perhaps if it's feasible, factory visits or, or site visits, my goodness. <laughs> maybe it'll end up being outside in pergolas or maybe there's a Adrian, maybe we'll all meet at her swimming pool or something like that. So um, who knows? But we've the committee decided, bearing in mind uh, Zoom this year, um, we're not trying to make money uh, for ourselves. Next year's rate will be £72 for the full year. But if you, if members pay uh, before the end of December this year, it will be reduced to £60. So we're cutting the membership back, bearing in mind we're on Zoom. Um, and I think that, I think that's working towards now. What we've done is we've also, because we've saved 
on the breakfasts and room meeting hire. We've made the char charity donation to uh, Loch Ness Rescue this year, and hopefully we'll be in a position to do the same. Obviously, we need to keep um, the uh, funds fluid, etc. So, but we're trying to keep the membership as reasonably uh, as reasonable as we possibly can. Personally, I'd like to thank Taran for his hosting skills, uh, Zoom and host and editing and hosting way beyond my uh, my uh, expertise. But um, I'll send an email to everybody just with a summary of that uh, in the next day or so. And um, hopefully you'll all think that it's well worthwhile joining up uh, for next year with all the benefits that Turan has mentioned. So thanks for me and uh, I'll hand back to Turan and I'll have to duck out at some stage, but I'm hoping to sort of stay as long as I can. Thanks again, folks. Let's go around the room. I'm just going to pick people at random, so you never know who's going to come up next. What I would, what, what I should have said, because Alan's give his pitch already and got away with it. Um, what I was going to say is, let's hear an interesting fact about yourself or your business. So it can be a, an interesting fact about your your, your business and and or, or or something just about what you did when you were at school or 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 that you can stick your tongue out and touch your nose at the same time. Yeah, I've done that joke, so you can't do it. Um, <laughs> so give us an interesting fact about yourself. So who will we start with? Who will we start with? Around the room, um, I'm going to say, oh, I was going to say Esther just to be cruel, but I won't because she's, she's halfway through something else there. Put it down, Esther. You're on You're on YouTube. Stephen. Morning, folks. <laughs> Stephen Meyer is my name from WPA Healthcare. I uh, live in Banbridge, specialise in private health insurance for individuals, uh, small fa families, small families, small corporate, large corporate, basically all, all the needs, uh, health insurance, and we also do like a cash plan for dental, optical, and things like that. Very much in the media this week and the last few weeks and the last few months, purely because of COVID, uh, going back into lockdown, one thing and another. Private facilities are still open, um, albeit it is taking a little bit more time, possibly to get seen by a consultant or specialist, but it's still business as usual. Don't know how long that'll last for because the critical care beds are most important at this stage and anything that can be put in hold will be put in hold. Uh, we currently have launched a, a, an offer for individuals and families for 25% discount this year, 15% discount next year, and 5% discount in year three for all the members that are on cover. So say we specialise in private health insurance. Uh, if you know anybody looking some some cover, certainly keep us in mind. Good stuff, Stephen. Thanks for that there. Nice and and direct. And yes, right now we need all the, the support we can get with the NHS being overrun. So who will we have next? Looking around the room, who's looking most interested? Denise, let's hear from Denise. Let's give you a spotlight. Spotlight for everyone. There you go. Denise, tell us all about the business. Hey, I'm Denise Hummel, Digital Day and Marketing. I'm a marketing consultant uh, specializing in digital. Um, most of my work is around auditing performance, developing marketing strategies, um, creating content. I would also do quite a bit of SEO copywriting for website launches. Um, an interesting fact um, is that I've recently become a SOSTAC certified planner. Now you might ask, what exactly is that? But uh, SOSTAC is a business model. Um, rated as the top one of the top three business models in the world by the Chartered Institute of Marketing, which I am a member of and a chartered marketer. Um, I've been using SawStack for a number of years, but just over the last few months, I spent a bit of time getting my certification. Um, and I'm now among about six people, I think, in Northern Ireland who are certified, I think about 10, maybe in the whole of Ireland. And we are also among the first 100 certified advisors in the world. Um, I can use that for the next we while because I'm sure there'll be a lot of people sort of joining the certification program over the next uh, year or so. But um, so it was really, I was using that really to develop my skills on uh, developing the marketing strategies, looking at some of the models I've been using in a bit more depth. Um, I work as a consultant um, for Intertrade Ireland. I'm, I'm doing some work on their COVID program called eMERGE, uh, which is to support businesses both north and south of the border who want to increase cross-border trade. Um, if anybody wants some information on that, I can give you some details of what type of businesses are relevant. Um, so that's me, um, Digital Dan, 
marketing consultant specializing in strategy, content, and SEO. Perfect, and, and congratulations to yourself on, on that certification uh, and, and skills and expertise. Saw you in the paper uh, yeah. and all over LinkedIn and all over Facebook. You, you, you do know your social media stuff, good stuff. Right, <laughs> Robbie, let's, let's hear it for the print man himself. Let's see, get you spotlighted. There you go. Robbie, tell us about tell us about what's in the papers today, and a little, don't forget the interesting fact. I forgot to grab an interesting fact off Stephen. Tell us about you yourself. Hmm. Interesting. Well, anyway, I'm Robbie Abraham. I'm the regional advertising manager of the Ulster Gazette, County Down Outlook, and the Uri Democrat. Um, as Sharon says, I'm a firm believer in preaching that print is very, very much alive, and an interesting fact is that our circulations um, did drop in March, whenever COVID first hit us, but they have risen every week now for the last seven weeks. So we're well on the way to recovery and uh, we're very much alive and kicking. If you have a business which you would like to put out there to the local community, give me a shout and uh, we'll be able to work something out. Turan can vouch that print is very good and gets you awareness on branding and gets you noticed out there in the local community. So, um, like I say, Robbie Abraham, Ulster Gazette. Thank you. Good stuff, Robbie. Thanks for that. And yes, print uh, print is essential these days. I know we're, we're all talking about social media. We've got some social media experts and it's, it's, it's up there uh, on the agenda, but don't forget the print. <laughs> It's, it's equally important to get uh, a good demographic that's still out there and very loyal to the print. Right, who will go to next? Let's hear from, let's let's get into bed and breakfast with uh, Steve. <laughs> Did you like that segue? <laughs> very good, very good. <laughs> if we're looking for some marketing, I know where to go. Uh, not a second. Yeah, I'm unmuted. Uh, okay, hi, I'm, uh, I'm Steve Brownless, um, co-owner of Blackwell House with my wife Joyce. Um, Blackwell House is a boutique hotel guest house um, in between Scarborough and Guildford, uh, about five miles outside of Banbridge, if, uh, if that helps uh, put us on the map in terms of geography. Um, we are a six bedroom, um, five star uh, boutique hotel. Um, and up until a week and a half ago, we were extremely busy uh, following the first lockdown. Um, sadly, when the news came um, that uh, we had to close the door again, um, uh, we had, to, I had to, the, uh, the, the not so great job of calling quite a number of, uh, of guests that had booked in over the next four or five weeks to cancel their bookings, which, um, which wasn't a great, uh, great thing to do uh, for us from a business point of view, um, or um, obviously for, for them folks who uh, had planned uh, a staycation, of which we've seen a huge upturn this year. So our business largely uh, for the last six years has been um, quite internationally uh, centric a lot of American, a lot of Australian uh, uh, visitors. Um, but of course, this year there are no international visitors. So we are and have been seeing a lot of uh, staycationers. Uh, and I've got to say that the good people of Northern Ireland and Southern Ireland in particular have uh, supported us brilliantly. Uh, but that all stopped, obviously, on the 13th uh, of October. Um, so we've sort of ground to a bit of a halt. But we do have a, a couple of other offshoots that we started um, in, uh, in the first lockdown. So we, we do afternoon teas, luxury afternoon teas on a Saturday here at Blackmore House. Mm -hmm. Had done that for a number of years. Um, and during the first lockdown, we started to do delivered afternoon teas, which proved to be extremely uh, popular. And if you go onto our Facebook, you'll see samples and uh, many reviews of the sort of things that we're, we've been doing. When we started uh, again, uh, when we opened up again um, back in July, um, simply because we were so busy with the guest house, we stopped doing the delivered afternoon teas and just did those on a Saturday again. However, now we're in lockdown again, that's come back and, uh, and we are very busy with those again. So we do either delivered in the local area for a small charge or we do a collected service. 
um, and they have been extremely popular. Um, we're also working, or Joyce is particularly working, on a new project for us, which will be Blackwell House uh, hampers, Christmas hampers. So again, if you go onto our Facebook page, uh, we put a little bit of a teaser out on, on those, um, but these will be um, uh, three sizes of hampers. Uh, everything in the hamper is home cooked and uh, prepared by Joyce. Um, so there's some, some real scrummy things in, in there. Um, so enough of Blackwell House, just an interesting fact uh, about me. I've been in corporate life for most of my career. Um, and when we uh, built the extension, which you can probably see in the picture behind me, um, the uh, extension with three extra rooms, um, this was last year, we decided that uh, with the six rooms that I would, um, uh, I would give up my corporate life and, uh, and, and come over to Blackpool House full time. So I resigned last November from uh, Gaganel UK, uh, as head of Gaganel UK, and uh, uh, left at the end of March of this year, uh, right in the middle of, uh, or right at the start of the, the, the first COVID lockdown. So it's been interesting times for Joyce and I. Um, go onto our Facebook, have a look on that. Um, you can contact me on LinkedIn. Um, and if anyone wants an afternoon tea, you know where to come. Thanks very much. Brilliant and good, good to see that you're keeping busy one way or another. I'm, I'm going to ask, um, I take it you do gift vouchers for, for, for the staycations. So that'll be a great Christmas present yeah. for people. So. Yeah, we do We do gift vouchers for staycations. We also do um, gift vouchers for, for afternoon teas. Uh, so yeah, um, we, we'll try and cater for anything really. Super stuff. So lots of, lots of ideas to help and support yourself there. Right. Who will go to next? Round the room, round the room. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. We'll go to Graham. Graham, who was our speaker last week, or last month, last week. Last month. How, how, how the time think? goes in. Seems like only a week ago, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. It does. Yes. Thank you, Turn Graham. We are Federation of Small Businesses. And your opening comments you mentioned help support and looking out for each other and that's what FSB is all about. We're an organization of 170,000 individuals and we own the organization. There are 6,000 of us in Northern Ireland own about 15,000 businesses between us and we're there to help. We provide resources to members. We have the biggest legal service in the UK. Lots of people claim to give a legal service and they've got a very very tiny resource. We have the largest team of employment lawyers in the UK. They're their free of charge for our members. I've actually just took a, a message there from my office. Uh, I have to contact a Citizens Advice Bureau this morning who want to join urgently. You know why? They have an employment problem and they know who to turn to to deal with it. So they want to join us immediately. They've been having a hand about it for a few months and suddenly something's come up. So uh, it shows the sort of category of people we get. It's business owners, charities and social enterprises are also included. So that's very, very important. Um, interesting fact about myself, when I was 14, my father taught me to drive off-road and I learned to drive in a 1953 one and a half litre rally. And earlier this year, I bought myself, I mean to do it for years, but I got round to it, I bought a 1953 one and a half litre rally, which somebody had spent a fortune restoring. Uh, so that's the sort of interesting fact about me at the moment. Anybody who wants to see a rally, get a drive in a rally. Get in touch. Uh, Graham Weir, Federation of Small Businesses. Thank you. Graham, just 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 a reminder of this is going on YouTube, so you get, might get a thousand. I'm not saying that we have that many subscribers yet, but you might get a thousand <laughs> offers to come along and drive in that rally. So but well done and 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 great to hear You're about welcome. that. Right. Remember to join me. There you go. Thank you for that there. Join the network. ABC or FSB members are like you both. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, <laughs> nice little plug again there nice little plug because yeah and and you're you're very right you know there's a lot of pitfalls in business it's a it's a tangled web that's we weaved speaking of webs let's go over to ipa group and the lovely esther there you go like that segue again <laughs> am i on, am i on form today or not <laughs> don't answer that <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> Uh, bad uncle jokes. <laughs> it's the best thing. It's as good as they get. Anyway, carry on. Let's hear about the, your wonderful uh, thank services. You, um, Esther Lawson, Esther Ocampo, IPA Group. I never know how to, <laughs> never know 
who knows me by what name, uh, but I'll answer it often as long as it's not too early in the morning. Um, IPA Group is a small digital marketing agency um, based in Rathfryland and focused more on um, web design and social media than, um, and we would collaborate a lot with Denise and what she does with uh, copy and content. And uh, so we, uh, yeah, build websites from anything from small brochure websites all the way up to um, e-commerce, uh, hundreds and thousands of products um, and courses. And uh, we collaborate with lots of businesses. We work with uh, anything from small to one man, you know, from one man bands right the way up to hundreds of, of people in the office so uh, just think of us as, as an extension of your of your own business of your own team and uh, we come in and we we work alongside you and keep holding your hand as much as you need us to after the web design is done um, and we also uh, don't know if this is the interesting fact or not we also speak Spanish everybody in the team is English Spanish bilingual well at least the majority um and uh, that's because i spent 12 years in mexico my husband and business partner is mexican and most of the of the workers are, are uh, the either family members or friends or have become part of the family <laughs> since joining the team so uh, it's it's maybe not uh uh that interesting to some people but um uh, yeah that's that's us we're um currently working on a lot of projects uh cross-border as well and um, the trading online vouchers that the republic uh have given to their um population or small businesses um have been a real um godsend in these times and uh, they've really been helping out uh, their small businesses and uh, we've worked with a lot uh, there's been about four or five a month that we have helped um, get their websites up and running so uh, yeah it's been it's been challenging during covid and hope i'm still got my fingers crossed that the kids go back to school next week but uh, <laughs> otherwise it could be another challenge uh, but yeah it's it's been it's been interesting. It's been, it's really shown us who we really are. Let's just put it like that. <laughs> in, in, interesting time for us all. I thought your interesting fact was going to be how many minutes it took you to change all those clocks. <laughs> well, they <laughs> haven't all changed time zones, you see. Some of them exactly. haven't, are still on summertime. <laughs> I know. Australia changed a while ago and then America's not changing at all. America's not changed first, yet, no. <laughs> so uh, it all gets confusing. It all gets confusing now part of an international uh, coaching program as well yeah, so but the clocks help all. they do help <laughs> indeed, indeed good stuff right thanks for that esther who will go to next round the room round the room where will we stop joanna how about joanna let's hear spotlight joanna tell us about your business and an interesting fact right i'm joanna convo uh, from Clarity Change, I do leadership development and what I would do is come in and evaluate your skills, your emotional intelligence skills mostly, because they're the ones that can be developed. Um, and then use a, a coaching technique to look at how you're developing. Also do change management projects. Uh, I've developed an eight stage program for that, just to make your change processes more efficient and effective. I do also coaching, individual and executive and team coaching. And basically, if you're in, heading in any direction, you're just stuck with, in your life at the moment, um, you want a bit of clarity on the direction you're going. Coaching is excellent for that. And team coaching can just bring your team together in a really, really good way and also improves your culture and your organization, which you need if you're gonna change or improve. Um, it's bespoke service, so I will come in and have a chat with you, see what your needs are, see what I can offer you, um, and then individualize it so you're getting exactly what you want. Um, I, at the minute, have vouchers for those hard to, <laughs> hard to get for Christmas people, but you could actually change your life with a voucher, so, really good present for them at Christmas and just affordable and should be in the stockings because it really could make a big difference to them. Um, 
And my unusual fact is I've been working very closely with Tran these last couple of weeks. Um, he's got to know me inside out, which is quite scary. Um, just I had a skydiving accident a number of years ago, 25 years ago, worked with Tran and just went down to the site of the accident for the first time and it's opened a can of worms. So Tran and I are working on um, basically the best of hypnotherapy and what it can do for you. And I'm writing a book on that um, and how it links into leadership and how my recovery went. So it's been an open and can of worms, um, but has been really positive. And so I need to do something with this story. So if anybody wants to know more about that or how coaching can help after trauma or hypnotherapy, can help. Um, I'm also a hypnotherapist, so it's been great working with Tran with an awful lot more experience than I would have in that. But uh, it'll be good fun. It's good fun, isn't it, Tran? <laughs> Lots of fun. <laughs> We're um, doing a video and hopefully that will be launched very soon. Um, we're just, Tran's doing all the editing because there's absolutely no hope that I will be able to edit anything. Um, but we went up with a drone to the place so we could see it from above and it'll be really interesting so it'll be on his youtube channel soon um and i'm getting help to go through this book as well so keep an eye out for that um hopefully by next month we'll have it going somewhere um so we'll see thank you joanne mcconville super stuff joanne thanks for that and thanks thanks for the little plug um who will we go for next adrian adrian <clears throat> Morning, everybody. My name's uh, Adrian Bell. I'm a swimming specialist, is one hat. I specialize in eliminating the fear of water that uh, people would have, especially adults. Start kiddies around three and a half, and I teach them quickly. So within 10 weeks, they're swimming a proper stroke. Uh, the following 10 weeks, that, that's breaststroke. The following 10 weeks, they're doing front crawl and back crawl and deep water work. So in two 10 week courses, you have a competent um, child uh, and safe in the water. Um, I'm launching um, a new website shortly, so um, when I get that, I'll, I'll send it out to you all and let you see the update on that. Um, the other hat I wear is with um, an international company. It's called Relive International, and we help people uh, work from home. It's a food science company, and um, we were on a call the other night, and one of the ambassadors said that it's the only... Um, uh, company with we can scientifically uh, prove how the products are going to help you. There's been so much research and things done. Um, we're expanding uh, and looking to uh, open another couple of countries in Europe. It gave me my life back years ago. I had fibromyalgia. We are getting fantastic results with people recovering from COVID, which is taking quite a long time. You know, once people have had it, the recovery seems to be ongoing. So we're getting a lot of results with that. Uh, an interesting fact is um, years ago, just when I was starting out in my swimming career, I had the opportunity of spending 12 weeks in Crystal Palace with the, um, the uh, English athletic team were there as well. So Tessa Saunderson and those kind of people, which was great to see and, and connect with those kind of, of athletes. Um, otherwise, I would never have a chance to meet any of them. So, um, Adrian Bell, swimming specialist and uh, wellness coach. Thanks, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for for that. And and in my good segue, I have to move across to you because I'll 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 say, Adrian, you have a lovely little advertising video and a lovely logo. So, yes. if if for no other reason, check that out, and that'll segue nicely to. Uh, IntelliSense, <laughs> Internet Sense. Tell us about tell us about your business. Hello, all right, guys. Uh, Philip Wilson from Internet Sense. Okay. Sorry I missed you last month. I, I was busy, and sorry I missed you earlier this morning. Um, I had to drop my daughter off. Uh, as Esther said, it's good to get the kids out, uh, so she's out for for an hour or two, which is which is great. Who am I? And what do I do? I do illustrated animated video. I do video that I used to do video that was fun and exciting. Uh, Adrian's video is really good. Um, Mr. Yeah. Jiggy uh, video, so 45 second uh, promotional video for, for Adrian. So uh, fun, exciting, illustrated, animated video. 
Uh, more recently, though, I've been saying this on a couple of other forums and things. I've been doing very serious videos, so stuff on cancer awareness, stuff or sorry, stuff on breast cancer awareness, stuff on bowel cancer awareness, stuff on cervical cancer awareness, stuff on sexual impropriety. So these are kind of informational videos. They're a bit like the kind of if you're if you're old enough to remember back in 1986, remember the think once, think twice, think bike, um, and and you know air attack warnings and so on. So they're quite serious uh, videos, but they're done in a, in a in quite a fun way, quite an appealing uh, way. I have an ask this morning, uh, which I'm going to ask as well in, in another network tomorrow. Um, I'm going to release a video on LinkedIn uh, every every week for the next five weeks. And if you see it, just because I'm such good crack and such a lovely man and so handsome and incredible and will always help you guys out, um, if you just put, a, put a, a comment of any description, just that looks good or, you know, my my wife suffering from cervical cancer, or it doesn't have to do a personal message, just whatever it happens to be would be great. So there's going to be a video going up on LinkedIn every week now for the next five weeks, three on cancer and two on mental health and sport. Uh, so if you can help me out with that, that would be brilliant. My name is Philip Wilson, Internet Sense. Uh, very quickly, because I've probably gone over my 45 seconds and, and Tran's going to turn me off. Um, I once had lunch on Concord doing Mark II over the Bay of Biscay. And that all sounds very professional. It was very professional. Unfortunately, I managed to ruin it. I got completely hammered and sang Ulster Bus Take Me Home loudly at the back of Concord and almost got thrown off with a couple of buddies. So it um, gives you a very good insight into who I am and, and where I'm going in life. Uh, so that's Philip Wilson, Internet Sense, illustrated animated videos. Pretty cool. And, and give me a shout and give me a hand if you would. Thank you. And, and nice to be at ABC Network with the wonderful host, Joran Wurza. Thank you very much. You said the right things there. You said the right things. And and from one fun, per, uh, I'm telling you, I'm guessing that was before the social media days. So we don't have that little rendition on camera at all. Uh, just, we'll... just on that, I, I went with a guy, William, and I met him. He's now, he's now, um, uh, he, he, he works in people's gardens. He's a landscape gardener and he has the menus and he has all the different things. And I remember thinking, what an absolute shy talk I am that I didn't keep any of those things. But someday soon, whenever lockdown finishes and we're able to get out, I'm going to go around to his house and take pictures and I'll share those with you of the menu and, and all the different things he kept and put them all in the frame. And what did I do? Just obviously threw them up my arse. Um, so th 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 as you get older, you get you get a, w a little wiser. Um, it hasn't happened to me yet. I might have to find one of those beeper things for the replay on YouTube. Say no more. Say no more. <laughs> Moving on swiftly from that. Let's hear from Barbara. Let's spotlight Barbara, who is all over social media herself, has a wonderful talk show, which is on today and Thursday. But let's hear from Barbara about all about that. Hi, Taran. How are you? Hello, everybody. Good morning, ABC Network. I am Barbara Edwards. I am based in County Donegal, originally from Dublin. And uh, so I'm a real blow in over the border to you guys. Um, I'm a coach, a mentor and a trainer. Um, my main site is becoached.ie and I mainly work with small business and uh, helping them start out and get set up and things like that. So uh, that's where a lot of the mentoring comes in. And um, within the coaching, um, like a previous speaker said, I also work in wellness and I'm leadership and executive trained. Um, my Well Expo webcast happens every Thursday at 12 o'clock over on Facebook on facebook.com wellexpo.ie and it is kind of the wellness arm of my coaching. It started um, in the first lockdown back uh, last week in March, first week in April and um, it really is a collaboration between myself and IPA group as Esther said there earlier on and um, you know there's, there's lots of working together within within the ABC network and um, started it up just because everyone was locked down and everybody had lots of questions. How do I mind myself? You know, where do I go? Who can I talk to? All those kind of things. And I figured, well, just find a few guests to come on. Taran, you have been on um, speaking on the hypnotherapy. Uh, so, and believe it or not, it's still going. Um, so it started at twice a week, every week, uh, up until the end of July, where I had a mini wellness summit. And since the end of July, it has been once a week, every Thursday at 12 o'clock. And today it's to do with um, just pepping up your home interior design, because we're all in our rooms and what you can do on a budget and how you can just 
you know, put a smile back on your face because of what we're going through. So that's me, Barbara Edwards, uh, be coached, coach, mentor and trainer. Perfect. Wonderful. Great to hear and looking forward to the 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock broadcast on Facebook today. Thank you. Right. Uh, moving on, moving on. I'm going to finally, I'm sure she's saying finally, I was, I was here pretty early. She says, Gillian was, was one of the <laughs> first ones to log in today. I'm only getting around to her now. Tell us all about yourself. You're Jillian. fine. You're fine. Hello, everyone. And thank you for welcoming me. This is my uh, first uh, jaunt at the ABC Business Network. Uh, so thank you for making me feel so welcome. And it's been really interesting to hear what it, um, everyone else has to offer. There's some definite, I've been taking notes, so I, I already know who I'm going to contact after. Um, so brilliant, thank you. Um, I am a content writer and I specialize in blogging for business and also offer content support in the form of social media um, optimization through, that sounds fancy, but really it is if, I'm more right for individuals and smaller businesses who possibly really just don't have any idea. Maybe have social media or blogs and just don't have any idea of what to write. Um, a lot of people come to me just saying, I've only just got an Instagram page or I've only just got a, a Facebook page, but I don't know what to write and who my target audience are, what, what they really want to hear from me. So I will help them with that. Um, my background really is in blogging. Um, I've had a lifestyle blog for the last uh, eight years. And off the back of that, I've been able to ghostwrite and guest blog for bigger businesses and brands, but it's only recently that I have moved into freelance. Uh, just actually back in July, I thought, why not just do this in the middle of a global pandemic? I mean, there's no better time, right? Um, but it has proven to be really popular and really taken off for me and for that I'm really thankful. I think now businesses are realising the importance of having an online presence um, and I've really enjoyed networking with different people, especially because it is hard when you can't get out and about. So it's been great to meet different people via Zoom, via social media and through groups, especially on Facebook. So um, I'm kept good and busy uh, between that and two children at home with all that homeschooling. Uh, it has definitely been interesting few months, that's for sure, but um, onwards and upwards. And it, it's like I said, it's been really, really positive. Um, an interesting fact about me, I'm probably, my background is actually in sales and um, I've worked for big companies such as Ulster Rugby, the Belfast Giants, um, Bushmills Distillery, Dem Temple Bar down in Dublin. Uh, so writing, has, well, I've been doing it for years, but it's now moved to the forefront and that's what uh, my focus is. So it's been lovely to meet you all. And like I say, Gillian Henning and I'm a content writer. Thank you so much. Good stuff. Welcome, welcome to the group. And Thank hope you. to see you back on a regular basis. Don't forget that yes, early definitely. bird offer. <laughs> yes, great offer. Happy days, happy days. Right from one chairperson to another chairperson and, and there's two chairpersons going. Are they going to pick me next? We'll go for the finance, financial king. <laughs> we'll go to Craig, first of all. So Craig, tell us about yourself and your business. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Turan. Um, see, as soon as you said about the um, <laughs> something interesting, that's when you realize how boring you like this. You're going, <laughs> but I was trying to think of something. I thought of, um, I went to school with lads who, between them, have played international cricket, international rugby, international football. And I thought, that's not good because that's about someone else. And then I thought about my cousin who's a professional footballer. And I thought, that's not good because that's about someone else. So the best I could come up with really was uh, I lived in Dubai for four and a half years and I was doing what I do now, albeit it's a completely different ball game out there. Um, and amongst my clients, I could count two shakes. Um, so that was, that was pretty interesting because they were absolutely brilliant to deal with. And they were... They were Western educated, but they were the grandsons of the Sheikh, Sheikh of Sharjah. So um, it was it was really interesting insight because you know the newspapers would be full of Sheikh Alubna, who was the minister for the for the economy. Yeah, it was their auntie, and they were they were having dinner with her that week, and you're able to talk you know about the individual rather than the, the celebrity. Anyway, sorry, I digress. But yeah, so my name's Craig Dean. Um, I'm a chartered financial planner. I've been based here in Northern Ireland now for the last twelve years. I run my own business, Dean Financial Solutions. Uh, but I'm a, what we term an appointed representative of a very big company 
uh, St James's Place Wealth Management, who are a FTSE 100 company with almost £120 billion of client money under management, which I would very much position with clients that's kind of the best of both worlds because you get that small business feel and the personalised service and very much the partnership between myself and the, and the client, but also you get the financial strength, the economies of scale, et cetera, that dealing with the big boys gets you. Um, you just don't get the stupid call centers and, and so on. You get the individual approach and you get straight through to me. So I specialize in holistic financial planning advice. That basically means advice in the round. And I try and use my mouth and my ears in proportion. So I spend a lot of time listening, impart knowledge, impart advice when I can, and just come up with strategies to help clients' financial aspirations, financial dreams become realities over the sort of medium to longer terms. Work with individuals, work with families, very much work with small business owners because um, from experience, I understand that they're the busiest people on the planet. They, you know, they instead of working eight hours a day for someone else, they're working maybe 12 or 16 hours a day for themselves. So the very last thing they feel like doing at the end of, <laughs> end of the day, looking after their own clients is research pensions or look at life insurance options or go to the mortgage market and see what products are available. So that's where I can offer value. So from my point of view, meetings like this, what I'm hoping to achieve would be introductions in a busy business owners who could do with a spot of guidance in terms of their financial planning, but also um, other people who deal with those guys. So people like accountants in particular can be very, very great introductions because we can help one another very much uh, sort of enhance one another's proposition. Uh, solicitors would be another, would be another uh, great introduction. So my name is Craig Dean, making sure that my clients have the right planning in the right place at the right time. Good stuff. Great to hear from you, Craig, and welcome. I think it's the first time for yourself as well here. So welcome, welcome. And now, and again, it's, it's, a, it's a mad world out there for social media. We've already heard from a couple of people in the social media arena, but some people are more ruthless than others. Eh? Another segue there. This is as good as it gets. Ruth, tell us about ruthless media. You're so creative, Tarana. I love it. Um, yes, I'm Ruth from Ruthless Media. I work um, doing social media solutions for uh, small, medium businesses. Basically, it can be completely outsourced or it can be that sort of handheld support for people wanting to do it for themselves. Um, I, I love creating content. And in fact, my interesting fact was that for um, a full year, um, I had done uh, a vlog a day on YouTube and, uh, and shared that across various other channels and so on. Um, so as well as that, um, I'd also done 10 years of running camps for young people to learn technical skills and digital skills. Um, but before all of that, my, my background was actually going to be in the field of science. I did biomedical science at university. And uh, so it's been a complete segue <laughs> into something completely different, um, but, uh, but something that I absolutely love. And it's just great to work with uh, people to help build their online presence. That's Ruth from Ruthless Media. Good stuff. Ian. I'm here, so welcome. Thank welcome you. to the ABC Business Network. Um, we've got Brian. Brian just popped on late there. Brian, are you there? There's no camera, but just want to check if you have. Yep. Far away. There you go. So uh, I look very red, and um, oh, I've had a lot of these meetings over the last few years and occasionally paid for them. Thanks, guys. But um, I work for Southern Regional College as an innovation and technology specialist. And something, just listening to everybody that I've realized that I've been thinking about more recently is that my actual job is to help people to find out if they need to go and pay for something. Um, because what we do is we administer grants from government to help people to do small things in technology but mostly those things aren't going to end up as an actual product or an actual website or a blog or whatever. What we really do is we get, put them on that ladder and say, go speak to Ruth or go speak to um, um, the Ocampos or go speak to somebody else afterwards. So my uh, job is to push people out into the world and make them um, understand that they do have to spend some money, but you don't have to spend a lot. Um, Interesting fact, don't really have any. I'm very old. I've just done a lot of stuff. Pretty much everything I look at in the world today, I go, oh, I thought of that first. My interesting fact is that I didn't do anything about it, so there you are. Um, apart from that, it's Brian McGee at Southern Regional College, um, and I help people do interesting things with government money. Good to hear from you, Ryan. Thanks very much for that. Right, and... Uh, 
I think I've covered everyone, just glancing around the room, covered everyone but myself. So let's cue new background and cue spotlight. There you go, might as well spotlight myself. My name is Taran Mirza, and apart from being the chair of the ABC Business Network, I am my uh, hypnotist. Uh, Joanne, give me a nice plug there. She's one of my um, clients. Again, hypnosis is a very personal and private thing. So confidentiality is key for me, but it's always nice if someone steps forward and gives me a plug or a review on uh, Google My Business or whatever. So thanks to Joanne. Uh, and it really was, again, I'll, I'll just continue the story. Joanne falling 6,500 feet uh, without a parachute is not your everyday right. incident or accident. And uh, that was 25 years ago. And as Joanne said, we worked, we went down to the site a site where she couldn't go to before. Um, so uh, hypnosis is quite a powerful thing for helping any sort of trauma, whether it's a trauma over the sight of a spider. So uh, there's a fear and a phobia like fear of flying or fear of spiders right through to falling from the and hitting the ground at high speed. Um, hypnosis is very powerful because it's not about something I do to you. It's really about allowing uh, hypnosis to help you connect with yourself and change yourself. So it's a very powerful modality uh, in people's lives. And uh, I'm really delighted to be helping people and changing people's lives. So if you know anyone that has any stresses, anxieties, fears, or phobias at this time, please do pass on my details. That's Taran Mirza from Feel Good Hypnosis. And oh, do I say the phrase last but not least? Last but not least, let me take myself off spotlight. We'll move to our wonderful speaker for, oh, click the wrong button there. Move to uh, John McKenna, who is our speaker for today. John, tell us about your business and fill us full of facts and information about um, sales and how simple it can be. Okay. Uh, John McKenna from JMK Consultancy. The last thing I want to say is I'm a consultant, but I haven't found a better word for it yet. So if anybody uh, can think of one today, tomorrow, anytime, please uh, feel free to suggest. Um, I'm about sales development projects, helping companies grow their businesses through more customers, better customers, uh, and uh, helping them grow their business that way. So, But it's about delivery rather than theory. It's about solutions rather than just recommendations. So um, today we thought we'd share some of my ideas about sales. Um, I've been in sales for about 25 years, different parts of the world, lived in three continents, sold into about 20 different countries. Um, uh, don't speak English too bad. Northern Irish is my first language, obviously, um, but speak a couple of other languages. Um, not uh, Spanish too well, Esther, so I'll know who to go to if I, if I need some help there. Um, but conscious today we have a wide group and a wide variety of businesses here who deal with another wide variety of other businesses and, and individuals. So we just want to go through some uh, some aspects of sales. For some, it might be too basic. For some, it might be a little bit complex. We're going to try and touch on some of the basics and then go into a little bit more advanced. But we do want to make it as, a, as interactive as possible. Um, I'm a face mail person rather than an email person. That's why the coffee story is very important to me and, and, and working easy face to face. Um, so again, if anybody has any great ideas for outdoor coffee, do, do feel free to put them across. Um, but please, as many of you as possible, take your, your mics off mute. Um, feel free to chip in, ask a question. If it's any way complex, we'll answer it at the end. If it's, if it's straightforward, we'd like to address it during the presentation. Um, the more interactive we can make it, the better. Um, so I'll uh, start by giving you some graphics. Uh, if I knew how to work this again. Share screen would be the way. And here we are. So, is this? That, that's not the slide. Get in the perfect. Yeah. I All shoot. Good. Perfect. All right. So, um, today is about uh, sales made simple. Um, uh, what we're going to talk about today, we'll go through four or five key points uh, and cover three main principles to try and take away from, with us. Um, I'm going to tell you about why this is the oldest game. Uh, the ABCs of selling, the stages of the sale, not a, not a, a pun, but it, it, it works for our group. Um, it, it works in sales. It's been around for, 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 for ages, and it's something very, very simple to remember. 
A um, bit about planning and organisation. Um, we're going to finish close to the end on a little bit about negotiating when to hold them, when to fold them. Uh, and, and really to sum it up at the end, this is setting the tone as well. Selling is about serving. If somebody thinks that they're in to make a quick game or, or a gain or a fire sale or get one over on somebody, that's what can give sales a bad reputation. But the majority of other people are in there to, to bring something to somebody's life and change their business. And, and so it is about serving. And, and that's hopefully what we'll cover today. So why is this the oldest game in town? Um, long before we have had internet, long before we've had coins, long before we've had anything, there's been trade uh, and, and we've manufactured stuff or collected stuff and, and, and brought it. Um, we're all in business. We're all selling as it is uh, naturally, uh, more than likely for, for most of us. Um, but if we're successful in business, we've been doing some selling of, of some sorts. It isn't rocket science. It's quite simple. It's quite human. It's quite uh, natural to some people. Others want to grow into it. Uh, and, and that's effectively what some of today is about. Um, some people naturally do it. Robbie there probably could teach me a book and a half about it. Does it naturally all the time. The same with the rest of you is the way it's now going on online a lot of it. And with Ruth and Esther and, and Gillian there, you know, th this, is, this is just recreating things that have been done for millennia and millennia. Um, so there are many different types of sales business to business, business to consumer, small, large, transactional, complex. Um, you know, high, 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 long, long sales cycles are really, really short stuff. Um, but for me, there's three real principles in good selling. Uh, and I want to get some suggestions here at this stage. So feel free to tell me or say what, what, what do people think is important in selling, please? Ferran, you're always good for a, for a suggestion. Relationships, making, making oh. connections. Good. Good. Sorry, I should say, and to motivate people, there's a quiz here and there's a prize for this. We're going to recap at this towards the end. And there's a, a free hour of my time at any stage on any subject at all. So whoever can remember these afterwards, we're going to suggest them now. We'll pick the top three and then we'll, we'll, we'll see who's paying attention at the end. So feel free. What, uh, relationship is a good one. Yes. I'm understanding what you're selling. Are you always done? Sorry. Sorry. Go, go right. I hear second price is two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Philip, it may be fine for you. Yeah, that's right. I, yeah. Think, I think that an important aspect of selling is being kind. I've always tried, I've been selling things for 30 years, and I always try to be kind, always try to look after my customer, even if they're not my customers. So be kind to people who aren't your customers as well as, as people who you want to be your customers. Very good. Very good. You never know when they will be. Yeah. You don't want to look desperate either. <laughs> I think, do you know that kind of like that, that as well, which comes on that, I think. Not we're to look desperate that, actually. Yeah, we're going to touch on that. Good on you. Thanks. Barbara. A wee bit of desperation does no harm because you're going into the last week of your sales cycle and you need that sale because you're not going to be able to pay the mortgage can sometimes sharpen you up. So, so although you don't want to look desperate, having that desperate... Oh, yeah, having that inside. Yeah. There, there's a fine line between being keen and helpful and serving somebody. And then when it goes too far, the needle goes the other way, and you can come across the desperate. And that's that's an experience thing. That's a you know, there, there, I heard one the other day. There's no silver bullet. Selling is individual. It's very much bespoke to you. It's what you're comfortable with, and and in your business as well. So uh, it's just it's just practice and practice and practice. I often if you had a suggestion. I often relate selling John to a little bit of chasing girls in a nightclub in Banbridge when you're 22, and a little bit of desperation does you no harm. <laughs> Show the customer some respect <laughs> and have a knowledge of their business. Well, uh, Robbie, were you talking about respect for uh, you aiming that at Philip there? Or, um... <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> Don't be talking down to them. <laughs> respect, key, key thing. Yeah. Okay. I, I was saying about understanding what it is that you're actually selling. That's usually helpful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, I've what do you mean? To a few people lately who, um, they sound very vague about what it is and they're not completely sure what their product or their service is. Um, and then you're not clear as the person hearing that message, what it is they're offering. Good, good. Carthy. Yeah, very, very good. Any other suggestions before we go on? Not to be too, what they oh, need, not what you want to sell them. Very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Who said that actually? Denise. That was Denise. <laughs> Jillian, your, your thoughts? No, I was nearly going to say what Denise said. Just maybe don't sound like you're reading off a, a script as such. No script. Okay. Yeah. These will all be the uh, topics of my next talk. So thank you very much for giving me all the information here. But um, actually, uh, you guys have answered a lot of the, the key aspects that I found from 25 years in selling. Um, and, and you've alluded to a lot of them. The first one there, uh, not, you know, not what we want to sell. What, what do they need? Um, listen, listen, listen. The three aspects here, and I actually could just say that the, the, the three of them are nearly listen. It's like location, 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 Mark would say. Um, too often, two years, one mouth, and we use them conversely, especially in sales, we talk too much. Um, listen, what is the customer watch? What it is they're after? Uh, ask the questions. You get a little bit of rapport, get the person talking. Um, what are they really after? And sometimes they even say one thing and they, and they mean something else. Um, so very, very, very important to find out what, what do they actually need. Um, and, and if it's not what we have, then, you know, it's a different, it's a recommendation to somebody else. Or someone, there's no point in wasting our time or wasting their time on it. Um, the second thing, and somebody mentioned that, uh, you know, adding value. And this is, this is about um, understanding your sale. Uh, what does my product or service bring to an individual or a company's life or business what 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 impact do we make on them and um so so part of this here and again this ships back to a b's and c's if we listen if then we can position better what it is that we can do to solve a, an issue or a challenge that a company has but understanding that value is the other thing as well and and that's where a little bit of self-respect comes in uh, a little bit of, 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 you know, not being too desperate. We know what value it has and, and we can sell on that value. Um, and then really, really simple one. The last one, very, very important. It's about relationships. We talk about product, we talk about price, we talk about promotion and place. But people buy from people and, and that's really, really key. If we can help people, if we can serve them, if we can um, build relationships with people, and it is a two-way thing. And it's very, very important that we, um, you know, it's like relationships at home. If it's too much in one direction, it's not going to be a good relationship. It's not going to be long lasting. Um, sales can be an expensive process. Best sales are repeat sales. If we can get a customer, it's, it's, it's a lot less expensive to sell to an existing customer. So if we can build relationships and that's an ongoing process, then it becomes quite economical and, and beneficial to both sides. Which again, obviously that's, that's the key to relationships. So, the stages of sales, um, you know, and the ABC is very, very simple to, to, to remember for us all. Um, the first one is about needs. Discovering what the customer's needs are, and it comes back to listen, 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 and then analyze those needs. What really are, are they about? Can I help that? Can I resolve that? And if that's the case, then you present in that direction. If it's not, then you go somewhere else and you take them to somebody else and you, and you, and you get somebody else to help them. But it's very, very important. Otherwise, again, if you're using the mouth too much and the ears too little, you're talking about something that's not of interest to the customer and you've tuned them out altogether. Um, the second thing then is when you understand their need is to resolve the need by building the value of your proposition. So if it's um, creative writing, you know, the value of what you do honed into their exact situation, what is it that they're looking to achieve? What is it? the type of audience is, what's the language that they like to use, um, what's the, the, the benefits that they're like put, uh, interested in putting across. Not the features, but the benefits. And that's how you build value in somebody's eyes. That's how you, the customer then gets about how they really, really desire what we want. And then obviously the last bit kicks in where you get ideally a close, a sale, or if not a close, then a commitment at least. And that's what we're looking for at each stage is to try and after we've analyzed what they need and we have we have we have proposed in that direction is we want to try and move the sale forward are they interested can we do something more yeah, let's get to the next stage if it's not a close is it a stage we need to get to a quotation or is there a meeting we need to do is there somebody we need to meet technically or whatever it is now again this is a little bit in more complex sales people will do this naturally the abcs of selling um we talk about the power of three but a key fourth one in there following up afterwards and again that comes back to 
customers that we've already dealt with before, it's easier to sell to another one. But even if it's a new one, and I would have done this before, we, we, we built a business from about 200,000 to about 8, 8 million. And the first year was about going out and, and, and knocking doors and making customers for the first time. You get a job, always go and follow up afterwards. How did it go for you? We talk about the power of three, did it go, and hopefully it's gone well. Would you like that? Uh, you know, did you like it? Was it enjoyable? Yes. And then would you like another one again? Or what's the next one? Or can you give me a referral? So following up is a very, very, very powerful thing. And again, social media is a great way of doing it nowadays. Um, lots of salespeople, again, we talk about it like to talk rather than to listen. But the key ones, the ones that are most successful are the ones that plan. Roy Keane said it, and I know there's a couple of Manchester United supporters here, Stephen's away now at the moment, but um, he said, fail to plan, plan to fail. So how do we organize ourselves? What's the simplest way of doing this? And, and this is a this is a this is a, a, a long um, uh, uh, pool. Uh, it's been existing for for decades. It can be used in all sorts of businesses and small businesses probably wouldn't use us enough for that. But I would definitely recommend it because when we've got lots of things going on, particularly whenever we're trying to sell and we're trying to deliver, it's very very hard to remember all the people that we've been talking to, what stage in the sale that they're at, and how do we move them across. So very very simply, a pipeline, or some people call it a funnel. And the funnel will be that it's obviously wider at the start. Who are the people that possibly might buy? And, and we start with lists and we try to identify that down to, you know, for example, um, you know, Steve and his business, people that like to travel, people that like to experience, uh, you, know, um, you know, a nice environment. Obviously, nowadays, that list has gone down to people that aren't from overseas because you have identified that your possible prospects are in, 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 a, in a, you know, Northern Ireland and the South of Ireland. They're called prospects. Whenever we qualify them a bit further and some people say, no, no, I'm not, I'm not going to travel that far. I'm not interested in this or I'm interested in a higher budget thing or a lower budget thing or I'm interested in something else, outdoor wildlife, whatever it is, then you've got them qualified a bit more. And this funnel is getting shorter or thinner and thinner, but these people are more qualified. How do you qualify them? If somebody makes an inquiry to you, there's a sign of interest. If you get the quote to them, quote them, price them, whatever it is, um, talk about their need. They, these are ways of qualifying the customers. And then ideally what you're going to do then, and again, listen, you know, Philip has said that there's a threat there. If it's two hours, it's, 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 it's very bad. But I'm about talking with people and, 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 and helping people on their journey. This is, a, this is a tried and tested method here. I do recommend it to anybody. And if anybody wants to reach out to me at any stage, tell me more about pipeline, tell me more about funnel. Um, it helps build longer term, more sustainable businesses because whenever the ones at the end on their extreme right hand side, the customers who are giving you the revenue, Whenever that gets a little bit thinner, you have to focus more on the, on the qualified customers and on the prospects. And if you can have people coming through that funnel, coming through that pipeline all, that, all along, that'll give you a more sustainable business. Whenever things are getting a little bit thinner at the end, you got to go back and you got to focus on the steps before. Um, again, if anybody's any questions at any stage, do feel free to, to come in or, 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 or at the end, whichever suits you. Um, Almost towards the end, um, in terms of pricing, that's a key thing. Uh, we talked earlier about having respect for ourselves, understanding our value, uh, and, and this is part of it. People in this part of the world in particular, and, and Esther, I think you would find it that some of the grant schemes down south are quite beneficial. In the north, we're a little bit more penny savvy, and you know that's some people are saying that trying to go to the south and get business, actually you can get better rates for it. Um, we would find the price of a pint, the price of a, a hotel would be more expensive down south. So bear that in mind whenever you're dealing with somebody from the south that they're maybe used to a little bit more, uh, paying a little bit more, but we, we can give a bit more value up here in this part of the world. So basically this one's about negotiating. And negotiating, the key for negotiating is value. If you can add value to somebody's life or somebody's business, and it's not just about the cost, it's about the impact that you will make to their business, what will that do? And if you can get them ideally to quantify them, if you can save 10 hours downtime, is that 10 hours of 50 people down? That's 500 hours of, 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 of value that you're saving that company and therefore the cost is going to be a lot less for it. So selling that value, but the more you know the value and, and um, the more you understand, was it Ruth that you said it, what you're selling and you're very clear about it and the impact that that makes on somebody then you know what impact, and therefore, when you convince them and help them understand, and it's not about us, 
It's not about our product and it's not about the features. It's about the benefits that it does for that customer and how that changes their life or their business. That's where you get real value when it makes an impact on them. Ideally, they get it. The, the techniques that we have help them to understand, but occasionally, sometimes they don't. So is it ever worthwhile walking away? If you have a limited supply, if you have time, is, is, is your key deliverable, like Philip or, 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 or like anybody in, in the social media? If you've only so many rooms in, in your in your in Craig again, if you if you uh, you know if somebody's trying to you know get it for less than you only have so much time on 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 your on your working day, then quite often, sometimes you have to have that respect for yourself. And no deal is better than a bad deal. If you're in a manufacturing environment, you have a fixed base cost, and your price has to be above that. If you're below that, obviously you're going to make a loss. But for us, when we're selling time and and, and services like that. It's opportunity cost. What could we have been doing? Could we have been getting a better customer, uh, somebody that does value what we what we um, uh, can deliver, uh, instead of working with somebody that that doesn't value that? And so sometimes that's a call that you got to make individually. Sometimes it is better to walk away. Lastly, uh, it is about serving, and people that are there to think. This is about getting one over on a customer. This is about uh, a quick steal. This is about getting in and getting something. It's going to be a short-lived sales cycle for you. It's going to be, you're not going to get the referrals. You're not going to get the repeat business. Um, it is a service industry. The relationship is about respect in both directions. But we got to make the, we got to make the, the um, we got to make the, the first move. We got to, you know, some people have, are out there and, they're, and it's, they're, they're in business despite themselves. Um, they're maybe you know not naturally good at selling, but they've got a super product and people know about it and they come to them. But for the rest of us, and, and there are some success stories out there, but for the rest of us, it's very very helpful if we can if we can help customers along that pipeline process, and we can do that by making a little bit of of, of investment in time and making a few call, phone calls to them. Follow up was one thing that, that we didn't talk about, but following up on the inquiries. Just, and it's nice and friendly. It's nice about helping somebody along that process and making that decision easy for them. It's amazing, even in business, how many people make decisions because you call them and you follow up on an inquiry or, or, or a quotation and just wanted to know about it. And sometimes it's didn't understand this bit, didn't understand that bit. And somebody gets in ahead of you and they happen to close them because they explained their proposition better. And the guy's struck for time. And so he says, yeah, okay, I'll go with you. So if you can do that, if you can follow up on yours, and it's just about helping them along. It's not about hard selling. It's not about forcing. Um, it's just about uh, understanding that process for the customer, what it means to them, what he really wants to achieve. So big money time, big prizes. Um, if we can put into the chat here, what were the three things we talked about? There was three key words. And the first person to get the three key words, how do I see this? They win the first prize. The first one was location, location, location. See, I listened. <laughs> okay. Well, you're not listening now because it's into the chat. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so listen, actually, I, I expanded on listening a little bit, but listen is one of them. Okay. There, so there's a hint, right? There's three things and the person that can get the three key things. Listen is the first one. Listen, add value and relationships. Uh, is that Graham? Yeah, what happened day. to putting it in the chat? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I, 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 I stirred it up by speaking there. I stirred up by speaking. I was cracking that joke there. Yeah. We'll, we'll you know it. what? There's going to be one yeah, for the verbal and one. Uh, but that is, that, that is it. Yeah. No, listen, and, and uh, you know, not, not to devalue the prize, but um, the cup of coffee is there at the side because, you know, I, I find that, that you get to the heart of the issue over a cup of coffee. We talked earlier about going for coffee today. You know, people open up a little bit more when, when we're a little bit more relaxed and, and we get to the heart of the issue and what, what, what's, what's important to people, what's, what's the challenge. Um, and so, you know, I am very, very keen to have a cup of coffee with anybody. Graham, I will pick up with you on, on, on this. You can probably teach me probably more than, than I can help you with, but um, thanks very, very for, for that. But you're, you're dead, right? Um, the three key things for us to take away from today is listen, 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 add our value and build those relationships. It's a lot easier, a lot simpler, a lot more cost effective to repeat business, to do business with the people that we already know. And it's a lot more enjoyable. 
and and so this is the last thing I've had in there about mindset. It was going to be one of the topics for me, but you know, if if you can remember the sale that you um, listened really well and you got to what the heart of the issue was for somebody, and then you presented what you did in that with that with that aspect in mind, you probably have a really good memory of a great sale. You probably have a good relationship because you had an impact in that person's life. But those positive memories, those are the ones that whenever you're getting a tough, whenever somebody's saying no to you, and, and it's not for everybody, those are the ones to remember. Those are the positives to take out of it. Those are the ones that, that give you that smile whenever you're having a rainy, wet day on top of a, a, a lifting platform that, that, that Alan's talking about. Those positive memories are the ones that put you in a good mindset to keep going, keep following up, keep talking to people, keep listening. So that's about as much as I know in selling. There's millions of topics there. There's, there's lots of other things. Philip talked about kindness, you know, and that's the relationship building thing. Um, you know, not being desperate, re respect, understand what we what what we are selling. Uh, if I could read my own writing, um, what the customer needs, yes, uh, definitely. Um, and, and not selling off a script. The more practice we become at it, the more natural it becomes. I was a really shy person at college and school, wouldn't have talked to anybody. And 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 look at this now, you can't get me shut up. So it's just practice. It's just getting out there, trying it. There is no silver bullet. Just try and remember the things that work and it won't work with everybody, but that builds your confidence and builds on, 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 on our esteem. And, and the positive memories, the things that have gone well, the difference we have made for people, the relationships that we have out of it, it makes it a really, really enjoyable uh, career. If anybody wants any help with it, by all means, at any stage, give me a call. I'm, I'm very, very happy to have a cup of coffee with somebody and have a chat with them. Um, if it's anyway complex, then we'll, we'll set up a structure. If it's not, we can do it there and then. Perfect, perfect. Ruth, you had a you had a hand up there. You've got a question. Or... No, I was applauding. Oh, applauding. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Good stuff. Any John, questions from anyone in the room? John, I would just like to say you're spot on about the relationship bit. Um, if you build up the trust, then you have the relationship, and it is far easier to hang on to a customer than to have yep. to go out and get a new one. Yeah, uh, try the Robbie trust key thing. Yeah, and, absolutely. And very, very simple to that is just do what you say you'll do, deliver what yep. you say you'll do, and and that builds trust. And it's amazing how rare that is actually, because um, the, the, you know people go back to the people that that, that said that, that did what they said they will do. Exactly. Good thinking. Yeah, very good points. Great a, points. Did someone else have a hand up there? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, felt. just uh, more of an observation or, or something a bit of fun. Uh, John, thank you very much for your, for your presentation. I started selling, I'm 49, I started selling when I was 19 and straight out of school selling fax machines. And my, my old boss was a teacher and he sat me down and he wrote on the paper and I can remember the, I can remember the style of his writing because he was a teacher previously and he wrote down ABC. So whenever I saw ABC and your ABC and everything being ABC, I thought this is going to be easy. I'm going to know all the answers. So it's nice to see that selling's evolved. The, the, he wrote two things down. One, uh, very quickly, one was ABC, which was always be closing, which is barely really aggressive. You just start closing your customer right from the very moment you, you see them. And of course, your man gave the very famous Glen Gary, Glen Ross speech. So if you get the chance, you should look that up. Everybody should look that up. Very entertaining. Always be closing. But the other one he, he wrote as well, and now he seems really, really dated. And it was man, M-A-N, uh, man, authority, need. And it was, you know, make sure you're selling to the right person. Make sure they've got the authority to buy it. And, and make sure, hopefully, that they need it. Even if they don't need it, you can still sell it to them. But but those are the key things. But it seems really sexist now in, the, in, our, in our woke world in which we live. Man, M-A-N, seems really sexist. Navy C, you have completely rewritten, uh, John. So if you're over in Belfast Way, I'll buy you a copy, son. How does that sound? That's very good, yeah. I'll take you up on that. Um, uh, no, but, but actually, Philip, you know, ABC, and that used to be, always be closing. But that's what gives sales a bad name. You know, forced selling and... Some people get away with it. Some people, some people still do it. But more often than not, it's just about filling a need. And, and, and that's where your, your MAN comes into, you know, understanding that need properly. Um, it's, it, you know, and then that's where, that's where it gives a, a good reputation. It can be a great career. It can be, it can be great fun. You make super relationships. Um, and, and, and you come out of your shell. You know, I, I was a really quiet guy, but, but, but through selling and through, through the experiences I've had in different parts of the world, it's it's, it's been great for me so far, and, and I'm, I hope I'm only starting my life yet. Still, 
happy days. Good stuff. Listen, guys, I'm just looking at the time here. We've, we've whizzed on. That was a brilliant. Thanks very much again, John. That was a brilliant uh, presentation. Uh, I think we've, we've overstepped our time. I was going to show, because Craig says I've never used breakout rooms and myself as a chairperson, I was going to show off how to use breakout rooms, but we're not going to have time. So please do uh, check out the YouTube channel. Like I say, I'll put all the connections in the, if you haven't uh, saved uh, you can still have time to save the chat if you want to grab anybody else's contact details. Don't rely on this network meeting. It's only once a month. So find someone in here that you can connect with and make those connections. And uh, I think at that point, I think we'll do it for the day. That'll, that'll be us for the day. So thanks very much for coming and see you next month. All right, guys. Cheers, thanks folks. All the best. Cheers. Thank right. you.